hey guys welcome to this video in this video we are going to see the functional differences between vmax 2 and vmax 3 last video we had covered the hardware differences between vmax 2 and vmax 3 i have given the link here so that you can go ahead and watch to understand what are the uh, major differences between vmax 2 and vmax 3 in terms of hardware so in this video i'm going to cover four functional differences the first one is operating system second one is uh, storage resource pool or srp third one is fast fully automated storage steering and fourth one the devices itself the first one is operating system the vmax 3 family arrays will be 100 percentage virtual provision and pre-configured in the factory the, these arrays are built for a management simplicity, extreme performance and uh, scalability within a small footprint of area. So VMAX 3 family arrays um, uh, storage can be provisioned with a SLO which is a service level objective. So in the previous versions of the VMAX family the operating system was called as the Ingenuity. Uh, started with VMAX 3 the array operating system is being called as Hypermax OS. However when you look at the solutions enabler output it will show as a ingenuity version so let's look at the ingenuity version itself if you look at any uh, vmax 3 array ingenuity versions you will see these three values the first digits indicates that which family it is from so this indicates that 58 is from VMAX and 59 onwards it indicates it's a VMAX 3 array. And the next digit shows us what is the micro code family. It is on the major release uh, level. And the next digit shows us the uh, field release level of micro uh, asymmetric micro code. The large digits indicate that field release level of service processor or MMCS management module control station so you can use a sim cfg list with a symmetric id with the v output you would be able to see the micro code version and uh, the simmin version and the ingenuity build version itself apart from that you have something called epac so you would be able to see what are the patches installed in the array by running command called simcfg list hyphen u patches this will list you the ingenuity level and the total number of patches installed and what are the permanent patches what are the temporary patches so temporary patches will be prefixed with uh, uh, t and permanent patches will start with uh, p so the, the output is truncated here however the whole output contains the individual patch informations also. So in the all flush models, uh, two variants, one is F and another one is FX. So the, essentially the hardware's on F and FX are same. Only the license package is going to be changed. So you can see it in the screen, what are the uh, licenses included in the F package? What are the licenses included in the FX package itself? VMAX 3 features dynamic virtual matrix. It enables hundreds of CPU cores to be pooled and allocated on demand to meet the performance requirements. VMAX 3 also offers an embedded NAS solution. We had discussed the same thing in the hardware differences that we don't require a physical data mover or a control station. The virtual instances of the data movers and the control station will be provided in the NAS services. The very important point to note here is VMAX 3 also has an opportunity to get rid of the inbound management, which means you should have an uh, external host with a HBA and FC connectivity, and you will have to make the zoning to manage the symmetric array normally. But in the case of VMAX 3, there is something called e management or embedded management from MMCS, you would be able to manage the array without hassle. So next thing is storage resource pool. Before looking into the storage resource pool, it would be good to see 
how the storage configuration will look like in the VMAX 2. First, what we do is we select the drive technologies, how many number of drives and what type of drives. So that needs to be selected and then we'll uh, decide on the rate protections. Preferably the SATA drives or the NLSAS drives will go with rate 6. You know, it depends upon the rec customer requirements, we will choose the rate protections. And from there, we'll carve out the TDATs or the data devices. So these data devices will be pooled into something called a thin pool or a virtual pool. And then afterwards, we create FastVP TS and then the FastVP policies. Then we define the FastVP time windows, which means that at what time the Fast needs to collect the data and what time Fast engine needs to move the data up to the tier and down to the tier. So that window needs to be scheduled and then we enable the fast VP. When we come into the VMAX 3 storage configuration, as we discussed earlier, VMAX 3 is completely predefined in the factory itself. So, so in the VMAX 3 storage configuration, we are going to select the drive technologies and the rate protections. And in the VMAX 2 array, we used to create a TDATs but TDATs will be created in the factory itself. Virtual pools will be created in the factory itself. Also, there is no fast VPTS and policy because it's going through the SLO based. We used to define the fast VP time windows. Here it is not required. And we will enable the fast VP, it is not required. So this is all about the storage configuration. It's pretty straightforward and easy to execute. So how do we do uh, application provisioning in VMAX 2? So we, create thin devices and afterwards if it is if if it requires we will create the meta out of that also it's based upon the performance requirements then create the storage group add the devices to the storage group you can bind the storage group to the pool or individually you can bind the devices to the pool itself then associate the storage group to the fast policy but when we come to the vmax 3 the application provisioning is simple and straightforward just choose a sg name Choose SRP that we are going to see what is SRP in the next slide. Choose SLO, service level objective. And choose the volumes and how much is the capacity you require and, and submit the changes. So what is the storage resource pool? The first thing we will have a disk groups. The disk groups are one to one mapping between the drive technologies to the groups, which means the disk groups will have the physical disks, grouping of physical disks to the disk groups. From there, carve out the data devices or the TDATs. Those TDATs will be added to the thin pool. So this collection of the thin pool will be put up in one SRP, which means a storage resource pool. And then associate the SG with the storage resource pool. Normally you will see a single SRP in the VMAX 3 array because the fast VP movements cannot happen outside of the storage resource pool. So it is always recommended to keep a single SRP and default you will be seeing a single SRP unless until there is a specific requirement to do so. All the data devices in the disk group will be added to the data pool. So that's what we have said it is a one-to-one -one mapping between a data pool to the disk group or a thin pool to the disk group in, in case of VMAX 3. Uh, each drive in the group has the same number of hypers. Uh, uh, VMAX 3 array supports up to 512 uh, data pools or a virtual pool thin pool and within SRP you can have up to 512 data pools or thin pools or a virtual pools. The next difference which we are going to discuss is FAST, fully automated storage steering. The FAST will be permanently enabled in VMAX 3 arrays running with the HyperMax OS. In the VMAX 2 generation, as we had seen, we have option to enable and disable. There is no such option available with the VMAX 3 FAST. So the FAST automates the identification of active or inactive application data for the purpose of relocating the data across the uh, different performance or a capacity pools within the VMAX 3 array itself. 
so the fast mechanism or fast engine proactively monitors the workload to so identify the busy data that would benefit from being moved for, uh, move, move to the higher performance of drives also it identifies the uh, less busy data that could be moved to the higher capacity drives vmax 3 array fast moves are typically based on uh, chunks of 42 tracks uh, which means 5.5 mb on prior generations it was uh, uh, 7.5 mb which means we are doing in more granular basis on vmax 3 there are three levels of granularity that is extent the single track which is of uh, uh, 128 kb versus 12 tracks which is on the vmax 2 which is of 768 kb so the extent group is 42 extents and on vmax 2 it was 10 extents which means a 5.2 mb in uh, vmax 3 and 7.5 mb in vmax 2 the next is extent st uh, extent group set which is of uh, 42 extent groups that is 220.5 mb in vmax 3 360 mb which is 48 extent group in vmax 2 actual movement is performed by the eds emulation in vmax 3 array and this fast movement is 24 plus 7 the next difference is on the devices when thin device is created it is associated with the default srp and will be managed by the optimized slo as a result of being associated with the default srp the thin devices are automatically in ready state upon creation if you notice in the vmax 2 we will have to bind to the pool to get the tdow to be in read write status during the creation of the thin device uh, optionally we can add them into the uh, existing storage group normally the thin device will inherit the srp and the slo parameters from the storage group sg level no actions will be allocated during the thin device creation and if there is no writes happen to that you will not be able to reclaim back those tracks but in the case of vmax3 each writes on vmax3 will cost a single track of allocation in vmax2 we have something called a vault devices uh, in vmax3 we don't have such concept or such vault devices because all the vaulting will be going to happen on the slot level as we had discussed in the hardware differences video so apart from that we have bcv plus tdev uh, srdf thin devices and the tdats we had discussed about the tdats because uh, it will be pre-configured and created during the uh, bin file creation this srdf thin devices are default uh, dynamic RDF capable INT plus TDEV is the uh, internal only devices which cannot be used to store any data it is internal only device to the hypermax OS that concludes thank you so much for your time have a nice day ahead